Within weeks of the governor's departure, the extremists in the army finally pushed the Herero too far. They rose up and terrible scores were settled as the relatives of Herero, raped or killed by Germans, took their revenge. In the first few days, over a hundred German soldiers and farmers were killed. But the rebellion provided the perfect pretext for the most radical among the settlers and the army to take over the land. They now set about the grim work of ethnically cleansing the colony of the Herero. But there was a problem. Not all the Herero had rebelled. In fact, the rebellion of January 1904 was relatively localized at first, centering around the northern town of Okahanja. Elsewhere, the Herero were just going about their normal lives. To achieve their aim of taking the land, the settlers and the army had to drag the whole Herero nation into the rebellion and transform it into a race war. The story of what happened in the tiny Herero town of Ochimbingue shows how, once the war had started, it spread to engulf the whole of the Herero people. Today, Ochimbingue is a forgotten backwater. But in 1904, it was an important Herero center. The Hereros of Ochimbingue had close links with the community of German settlers with whom they shared the town. Three days before the outbreak of fighting in the north, the German settlers here gathered to celebrate a wedding. But that evening, a messenger arrived bringing news that the Herero at Okahanja were on the brink of rebellion. Rather than panic, the missionaries of Ochimbingue instead met with the Herero chief Zacharias, who declared his peaceful intentions. He even wrote a letter to Governor Leutwein, declaring his loyalty to Germany. But the next evening, a group of German soldiers arrived in the town with food and ammunition. During the following days, the white population from the whole area began to abandon their farms and gather in Ochimbingue. And with each new arrival came a new story of the death and destruction that was sweeping across the colony. As their fears increased, the white population began to fortify a complex of farm buildings belonging to the Halbich family. The Herero, meanwhile, held their normal Sunday service. As their hymns rang out across the town, the German soldiers, only meters away, paced out the range of their field of fire. Barbed wire was strung around the building and firing holes made in the walls of the Halbeck station. On the 23rd of January, just nine days after the start of the uprising at Okahanja, the German troops finally opened fire. Despite all their demonstrations of loyalty, the Herero of Ochimbingue were swept into a war they didn't want against a German community amongst whom they had lived peacefully for years. What was happening in Ochimbingue was being repeated across the country. What had started as a rebellion was becoming a war. A month after the start of the conflict, Governor Leutwein finally returned to the capital. To end the fighting, he sent a message to the Herero chief Samuel Maharero to begin negotiations. But once the settlers learned that Leutwein had started negotiations, this fact was immediately leaked to their supporters in Berlin. Back in Germany, right-wing politicians and the pro-imperialist organizations wanted to use the Herero uprising as a pretext to take over the colony completely.
When the Herero uprising breaks out, news of it reaches Berlin on the 14th of January 1904. Uh, there is a, a huge pressure from the Pan-German League, from various other interest groups, attacking the governor, or Leutwein, for his soft policy towards the inhabitants of South West Africa. Uh, and they are putting pressure as much as they can through articles, pamphlets, this kind of thing, propaganda, uh, on public opinion and indirectly, therefore, on the government to take a tougher line. To the right and left, the Herero were not a people with whom Germany should negotiate, but savages who should be crushed. The German media constructs this image of a savage enemy, this barbaric enemy that kills anybody and rapes white women and kills children. And there's a whole campaign in Germany, a propaganda campaign, to construct this enemy that doesn't really exist. A heady mix of nationalism, militarism and racism swept over the Second Reich. Kaiser Wilhelm II ordered a new army to be sent to crush the rebellious Herero. And to lead this force, he appointed a commander with a fearsome reputation, General Lothar von Trotter. 